They forgot about you, pimpin', they forgot about you. They forgot about you, pimpin', they forgot about you. They forgot about you, pimpin', they forgot about you. You need to speak because the streets done heard a lot about you. They forgot about you, pimpin', they forgot about you. They forgot about you, pimpin', they forgot about you. They forgot about you, pimpin', they forgot about you. You need to speak because these streets done heard a lot about you. What up, what up, it's your homeboy, Mom Pimp, a.k.a. MCP, and welcome to another special edition of the Pimp Hog TV Podcast. And as always, like I told you, I keep that exclusive shit coming through. Always, always, always. So we got a very, very, very special guest here. One of the hottest new producers in the game, straight out of Memphis, Tennessee. I'm talking about Hit Kid. Welcome to Pimp Hog TV. Welcome to Charlie Luke and my guy. How you doing, bro? Good, what it do, man? I'm cool, man. I'm cool, man. Glad to have you in the city, man. How sure. you doing in the city so far, bro? Oh, I didn't get a chance. I came straight into the, uh, you know, what I'm saying to right. the panel, but uh, right. Right. it's a like, nice looking city. I right. think this is my might be my, my my first time here, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, this is right. my first time to check. Yeah, we're official. Oh, we're official. <laughs> Let me ask you, I'm gonna get right into it, bro. Uh, you one of the hottest producers in the game right now. Uh, I want to ask at least a lot of these questions so upcoming producers can hear shit like this. Uh, so a lot of producers start out selling these forty fifty dollars, just trying to get out there. When do you know it's time to graduate from now before you get any kind of place before you become that guy, when do you know it's time to start upgrading the price of the beats? Like do something happen to when like, okay, a hot local artist got my song, now I'm finna double that price or I'm just tired of getting fit to sell hundred dollars a beat and I've been spending all this money on my equipment, so I'm finna just trip on my what's the excuse to just start upgrading your price before you get there? Uh you gotta understand your worth on your own. Right. Understand your worth on your own, like at the time when I stopped selling leases, because I feel I feel like I was like, um, what's the what's the term? Like I kept like watering myself down because I was trying to you know make some money. Right. I was like, bro, yeah, like I'm just it was just I got my B said where I didn't like the leases. I kept like you no know, sometimes resetting the same B. I'm like I don't like that. Like right. even though the money cool and I you know I need the money at the time. I'm like I don't really like this so. I was like, you know, I'm finna stop. Let me just stop. Like, I'm, I'm right here. I had already built up enough reputation okay, to be okay. like, okay, I can switch to just selling exclusive. Um, so I was just doing exclusives, but I was doing it for everybody, and then I stopped doing it. And but this that came after I had made, you know, got a little got more. for yourself. Right? I built the platform up a little bit more. Then I'm like, okay, now I'm just doing whoever I want to work with, and I'm really not even selling beats. Uh, like I'm not like selling them to get the little money right quick. You know, I was just getting them in the studio, working on songs. We go, get, we worry about the money later. That's after I had already built up a reputation. Okay, like, okay. you know, sometimes you might take a risk and be like, you know what, I'm just gonna jump in. Not setting the beats. A lot of people do that. Just take yeah. it free because I want to get my. I want to get just get it hurt. You follow what I'm saying? Yeah. So, uh, but is something wrong with that? Like, man, just I'm just trying to get my shot. Just no, nah, like that's the impulsive decision that turned out for the best. Sometimes, sometimes it might not happen, but you know, that just is what it is. Like you got to know yourself before you do. I done made a lot of impulsive decisions. Like I done went to New York and spent. I had like six hundred dollars. I went to New York trying to meet McMill and end up. Spending like three hundred some dollars, my I didn't even know I was even supposed to. I wasn't even supposed to do nothing. I was just going there to support my home. And my mom was like, "You got to ride the mega bus back." And I was like, "It's a, it's cool." I look at the mega from New York to Tennessee. Yeah, I was looking at the mega bus tickets. I was like, "I got enough just in case something go out. I don't even work out." So I'm glad you said that. At least I'm I'm just going to uh, Meek Mill to meet. I mean New York to meet Meek Mill. So. And that's the same thing artists do when it comes to who trying to shop itself as rappers. Like, I'm finna go to Atlanta and meet whoever and give them my demo or give them my shit. Was that your plan? I'm finna meet me Bill and give them a CD full of beats? So what, was, what was the point of him going up there to do that? Nah, my partner, uh, my partner, Trey DaVinci, he went up there for a meeting. Okay. And he asked me, you know, to come. Right. I guess he had said something on, on social media. I was like, you know what I'm saying? Congratulations. Con- congratulations. He was like, hey, I'm finna go up here to meet me. And I want, you, you know, I don't mind you coming. So I was like, yeah, I, I go. You know, I made sure I had enough money to go right. and enough money to come back some type of way. Right. Well, they said they were going to get the flight back, which they did. But, right. you know, I, had, I made sure I had enough to at least come back uh, home with, did that. And, like I, I, I took my laptop at least. Like right. of course, we just might in go, case we might we're going to just we go re- record. Even Meek don't do nothing. We go do something. So I got I got to have my laptop. Like I ain't going nowhere without it. Right. Did that, and 
They asked me that I had some stuff. I was like, yeah, I played some beats, and, you know, they went from there. Uh, what was your first break? So, well, okay, I'm officially not an underground nigga no more. I'm like, I'm there. What was, what was the first thing that let you know that? <laughs> I still feel like I'm underground, but. You're not, uh, You're not. I mean, I have to say F and L, but when I was working with underground artists, though, uh-huh. the globe was underground. Like, all the girls were underground. They say underground because they. Because F and F blew up, you see what I'm saying? So that's that was the breakdown, right? I, I, I guess you can say that, like, yeah. Real, you, but you did on some underground shit, and that's the one that yeah, just happened and to it, take off. Yeah, it right. went over above the ground. Right, right, right. Yeah. Since, since you brought them up, what made you choose to want to work with those five? That was the girls that was all performing at the uh, the showcase called The Ring in Memphis, and I was like, I want to. I always wanted to put like a, a like do a posse cut, like some gangster women, like had like some some women, but like gangster. Cause I'm like, bro, when last time we had like some women come out of Memphis, besides gangster Ooh, uh, gangster Chet. boo and Chet. a little Chad and yeah. Juicy Fruit, I'm like, and they I, all, they all sound different too, bro. Yeah, like, like I love like <laughs> slime and then uh, Aliza. Yeah, Man, bro, like, <laughs> yeah. yeah that, that was the, that was the thing though, just make some gangster. Create a gangster wave Like for women Because they're about Doing like this just like Pancake Pity pet type music I, I don't I like to Sound gangster Hey so when it comes To the FNF Fuck nigga free uh, When that shit Went where it went Did you see that coming Like man I knew That was gonna happen He was like Oh you was kind of like Man what the fuck bro I didn't, I didn't see that Y'all that, that caught me off guard To a certain what? extent Now the Grammy Was <laughs> definitely off guard I'm like man You knew you not see What the song called <laughs> Right, right. We getting a Grammy for this? Right. I mean, you know, I'm saying we get nominated, but like at the time, like, we, man, we get nominated. I remember sitting in the airport when they was like doing the nomination. I'm sitting in the airport, I'm looking. Yeah, he was like naming out like the uh, hip hop, whatever. He, so he's from the what? Rap Reform. Rap Reform. Okay. So he said, F, I got on Twitter. As soon as I heard, as soon as I seen F, I was like, I'm getting on Twitter. Hey, we just got nominated for a Grammy. I'm like, bro, this is crazy. Like, yeah. I did, like, hey, about reaching out to us. Like, man, we had a. Crazy, just all types of people hitting us up for like, hey, I missed the song Shaq, DM, and Glow, and like everybody, Shaq, yeah. Shaq, okay. <laughs> she had posted like a while ago. He was like, man, this song, man, I love this song. Keep it up, blah blah blah, whatever. But uh, yeah, it was crazy. Explain this for producers, uh, because everybody, just like every rapper, want to get heard. They want, they want somebody to hear their shit. Every producer wants the next artist, or the next hot artist to hear their music and, and rap over my beat. How do a producer, and maybe you can say something off camera, Kadeem, how do a producer go about getting song placements? Because you can have the hottest shit. If the right person not rapping over it, then you just know a producer's just underground. You follow what I'm saying? So how important is song placements on the right albums? How do producers go about getting that? Uh, is it the producer in the relationship? Is it the manager who's doing this for them? Like how, how, is that, how is that happening? I mean, in this case... I'm I do everything like you know as far as like groundwork when it comes to like creating and uh, Kadeem just you know if he you know so happen to hear some stuff or got a connection hey what you think about blah 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 I'm like yeah yay nay whatever but for the most part you know I do a lot of the groundwork but as far as like doing like album placement song placements or whatever I never was trying to do that like especially like now back then maybe but I always wanted to work I was always working with my partner like I always had like a set group of people I was working with that wasn't known or wasn't big like I was working with Coke Cash who recently I just signed to my uh, record label he the first person I signed what's the name of the record label? Uh, Camp South Records is all one word but um, yeah we graduated and once I got out of high school we was all working together like me uh, Lil B Lil Stunner we was always working together since like from 2011 Living to to like now, so me working with them helped me build up a reputation for them and for myself as a producer. So people would see us working, then they would reach out, and be like, hey, I see you working with my homie, or I, I seen the song. They kind of got they built up a you know enough reputation where they get to see it, yeah, I got you. and now they want some of what I did for them on their album. And then if I want to rock with it, then I work with them. And now it's starting to, you know, you got hearsay going all around. Memphis in the, you know, surrounding the area. So I'm working with them. And now somebody else may be bigger than her. Word and, of mouth. Yeah, and and, and domino, now they want to work. Domino and, effect. Yeah. What you going to say, Kadeem? I was like, yeah, the biggest thing just depends on how you want to take your career. Like, one thing I love about Hit, he's never placed in Chase at all. 
Mm-hmm. Like, he doesn't go after big artists. Like it, even when the stuff blew up and big artists was calling, like I was saying earlier, mm-hmm. it's not a thing where like, oh, I gotta go do this place. When he do what feel good to him, and I think a lot more like it, like producers should really take that path, right? I think a lot of people are in it for the money, and when you chase the money, you run into bad situations. You you sign bad deals because you want to be a part of somebody's <laughs> camp. Just to be with an artist, right, and say, oh, I'm signed to them, and then you end up getting left for dead over there. So I think a lot of times it's like just connecting with your homies, you know what I'm saying? The people that's around you rapping and building a brand, because I think that's what music was when it was started. Like, we celebrate 50 years of hip-hop, right? 50 years ago, it was people in their basement, the Dungeon family. Like, you see how many artists came out of there, all the producers, like, they built a community. And I think if we get back to that, like the music probably sound better too. So what I would challenge producers to do really is to lock in to the people around them and really just kind of build with them. And then that will lead you to a bigger placement. Like Fix. when Hickey and Blue, like Hickey was doing Megan the Stallion right before Glow. We didn't get no calls because Hickey was on Megan out. Why? Why did Because it's like, it don't really matter. You know what I'm saying? Like to be honest, they care more about what he can do when he started developing artists. Because it's a million producers. Anybody can send a pack, but you can't be Hit Kid. That's what separates you. Like, Hit Kid get in the room and challenge the artist to be better. Like, a lot of producers not doing that. It's a difference between being a producer, like Quincy Jones, right? That's what producer come from. It will come from Quincy Jones getting over Michael Jackson, creating Thriller, and now it's 30 times platinum. We don't really get that no more. We get beat packs. I think that's kind of like the difference, right? Like, it's what kind of what kind of producer do you want to be? Do you want to be a beat maker, or do you want to produce records like somebody like Hit Kid? Hey, I'm glad you said that, and, and, and Rick, because uh, that's a that's the diff, uh, that's a different approach than the average producer would take. Like, I want to work with a bunch of pretty much underground or no names as opposed to the big artists, because the whole thing is to get the big artists. Like, if I don't did a beat for you, 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 and you on some local shit, and Drake, uh, uh, Snoop Dogg, uh, Lil Wayne hit my shit, I want to get them to get on my beat. But to hear somebody say the uh, the different approaches, that's a, that's a whole nother. That's, I, I never heard that, bro. Because mm-hmm. the average producer wants the big name artist. That's what stamps me if I'm a producer, and that's what if I get him on my shit, then I'm gonna charge you. What I, you, you get? What I'm saying. So <laughs> as opposed to working with a bunch of yous, yeah, you know what I'm saying. His price when gold blew up. Right, right, right. That's what got us the that was justified, though. <laughs> yeah. I mean, how can you be the crazy to not do it? But yeah. it was something where we had more control. A lot of times, you don't really have control when you working with another artist. It's the label involved. It's probably a publisher. It's a manager. It's like it's more inorganic, right? right so right. you don't really get the benefit from it. It's like. If you drop off a beat pack and you get a song, like, think about it. It's plenty of producers on Drake album that you'll probably never hear from. Right, right. Because they just was on Drake album. They don't have a relationship with Drake. Whereas Tay Keith, he's on every Drake album. So it's a little different. It's different. A different you know what I'm saying? There's a relationship there that carries him through that. And so built up a reputation. Dude. Yeah, he got a real reputation with Drake, but it was built on a relationship. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Like, even though, like, some relationships don't work out, like, him and May relationship is great, right? You know what I'm saying? Eventually, like, it'll be something, like, big, but he don't care about getting a top 100 with me. We love May because it's May. You know what I'm saying? She's a workaholic, and she's going to do good. I think we chase more so, like, good people right, right. than just, like, money. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it came yeah. around before uh, before I had DFNL. Yep. So. In any sense, that's another thing. That wasn't even one of my questions, but the relationship word comes up. And I always say, every time I speak on the panel, every time I interview somebody, I've always said, I give this game to a lot of these young dudes in the city. Homie, build relationships, network. Relationships will put you in places that money can't. You can't pay for a real relationship. You can't afford it. It's genuinely built. You follow what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So with that being said, for what you've seen so far in the industry with you, how have networking and building relationships worked for you? A whole lot. <laughs> like, why is that important, man? We know why, but I just want to hear you say it, though. Uh, just like, the, I don't really know how to explain it. Like, it just, it's just a, it's a different feeling, like, when you, when you handling something based off a relationship than when you have to pay for it. Right. You right. see what I'm saying? Like, it just feel made up, and I can't sit, I can't dwell, I can't sit around in that, in the environment where it was based off money right. or, you know, some of that nature. So when I'm around, like, in the studio because, like, somebody genuinely reached out, like, dang, I missed you and I want to, you know, keep working. Like, this, it just keep making it. Like how Sonny said, as far as like, when we in the studio with good people, like, it's just creating, you know, it ain't got to be no hit. Like, we ain't chasing no hit. We just there got the vibe. Energy, and the energy different, yeah. too. Yeah, and of the, course. The energy, yeah, the energy different, yeah. Well, I'm going to ask you this, based on what y'all just said about how he don't chase the big artists, but, like, uh, 
What artist would you want to work with? If you just had your pick, uh, artists that we know, who would you want to work with? Who Kanye. Uh, just, yeah, and then for like, um, one man would be Rihanna. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Big dog. <laughs> Big dog. What is it? What is it about Rihanna that make that would make you want to work with her? Because you know, a lot of people know Hit Kid from like, like I said, the the, the trap beat stuff. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So why why Rihanna? Oh, uh, I feel like it'd, it'd be a, a, a good challenge. Like, and it would. Yeah, it'd it would, be a yeah. good a good challenge. Like I better. See, you know, really test my range, <clears throat> and then she's just a, a dope artist. Like, she's just a dope artist. What producers do you look up to? Like, man, he the truth. Uh, I was, I patted myself after that. Uh, I, I can study his craft and kind of, and kind of add my own switch. So, what producers are your idols or influences or uh, inspiration? Definitely Juicy J and Metro and Metro Boom. Okay. okay. Uh, and then, like, Kanye, as I grew older, Kanye, All right. just watch him produce, like, outside of uh, making, you know, making the beats. Right. Him actually putting stuff together. You know, Kanye, I mean, not Kanye, uh, um, DJ Khaled, when he puts people yeah. on songs, you know, sometimes they might not, you ain't think what makes sense when you see the song name and then it actually being a good song. You know, sometimes DJ Khaled really don't make beats, but he produces songs. So I take the what, idea, the concepts. Yeah. So that. I take that, right. mix it with you know with Metro and Juicy and Kanye doing, and you know I kind of like base it off that. But like at the time when I was really making beats, like the producer that was out was Sunny Digital. Like I was looking up uh, Lex Luger, Southside, yeah, yeah, and Metro. Yeah, like yeah, at yeah. ten made eight. Yeah. Uh, DJ spins a little bit, but like all them, all the folks from Atlanta, like he was talking about, like they really they think they want to be like. Them folks would be I would be on their YouTube Like dang It's so hard I just had to go to their YouTube And be like Okay I'm ready to make a beat now okay. so I used to go to Soundclick.com This like It was like a producer community This is right before I started Like making beats <clears throat> Well making beats Like on my own Like getting the FL studio And then making right. beats Like I used to go to Soundclick Just Just like Download beats And listen to them Like Superstar O And then Vibe you know what I'm saying? Like, they come in and, you know, follow me on Instagram and everything. So, that's pretty cool to see. Like, this, right, right. you know, it's I, crazy. I get it. I get it. I was just on y'all, so, like, looking at everything. Like, man, yo, Mitchell, who did your tag? I remember tweeting dude that, like, what, what your tag say, man? Like, looking at old ideas and tweets. Like, dang. Like. And now you writing this same mix, bro. Yeah. You're writing this same <laughs> mix. Uh, the last question, then I got to do one more thing with you. Last question. Advice for any up and coming producers, the produ- the nigga who you once was some years ago, that dude who's looking at you now. What what do you tell them? What role to take or what not to do? What to do? G- give them that advice. Uh, just you know, be mindful. Like when it comes to the business aspect of things, and then man, like, keep doing what you're doing. Like you do, <laughs> you ain't doing nothing wrong right now. Don't don't anything I did back then. Don't don't I don't regret it. Okay. Everything built character. Everything I did back then made me who I am today. So right. I never regret anything or want to take anything back. Cool, cool. Dude. All right, before I let you go, man, I'm gonna do this thing with you called the Pick One Challenge. I'm gonna name two things. You pick one. All right. You ready? Yeah. First one. Money bag. You're a black youngster. A bag. A ball. MJG or three six mafia. Three six. Lotto or Megan Thee Stallion. Uh, Meg. Cardi B or Nicki Minaj? Cardi. Kodak Black or NBA Youngboy? Mm, I gotta go Kodak. I listen to Kodak more. Beyonce or Rihanna? Rihanna. Gucci or Jeezy? Gucci. Two Chains or Future? Future. Lil Wayne or T.I.? Lil Wayne. Dr. Dre or P. Diddy? Mmm. Ooh, Puff Dad. I gotta go Puff Dad. Suge Knight or Jay Prince? Jay Prince. Drake or Meek Mill? Drake. Cash Money or No Limit? Cash Money. Last one. Lil Kim or Trina? Lil Kim. Lil Kim. Lil Kim. All right, that was Hit Kid for the Pimp Out TV podcast. Man, before we get out here, give them all your information your uh, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, blah, 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 so they can get in touch with you, bro. Find me everywhere. H I T K I D D. It's all one word H-I-T-K-I-D-D Man, everything you need to know Pop up 
Appreciate you for tuning in again, man. And welcome back to Chattanooga again. You dig what I'm saying? Thank you, thank you. Much love. Salute to my guy, Kadeem, sitting off camera. All love, man. You get what I'm saying? This is my all the pimp with the Pimp Hawk TV podcast. As I tell you all the time, go to my website, www.mylthepimp.com. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter, at mylthepimp. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, which is called Pimpaholic TV. And we out of here. Salute.